Hey everyone, my name is Jay. You can find me at thephotographyjunkie.com. Uh, I've had a couple of requests on how to make a um, picture come to life. So I'm going to take you with me from start to finish uh, on this particular picture, which I've done nothing on so far. All I've done is I've just imported it into Photoshop. So one of the first things you need to do is you're going to need to resize your image because animating an image and turning it into a, a GIF or a GIF, depending on what part of the country you're from, uh, takes up a lot of memory. So the first thing I'm going to do is go to image. I'm going to go to image size. And I'm just going to bring it down to 1080 and resize it. OK, so now we're dealing with a significantly smaller file. So one of the next things I want to do is, first of all, I'm going to bring my layers palette over. So what we want to do is actually turn this into a video, so to speak. So the first thing we need to do is go to window at the top and then bring up timeline. And you'll see the window come across at the bottom. And then the first thing you want to do is create video timeline. And that gives us a timeline at the bottom. So what we're going to do is we're going to create something, say, 15 seconds long. So I'm literally just going to drag. Let's go 20 seconds. If you want to spread out your timeline, you've got options at the bottom to, to zoom in. And it gets much more like a, a video editing application here. So the things we need to know about is basically any layer that you create in your layers palette will also appear on this timeline, which allows us, as you'll see, to, to move things. So what do I want to do to the image? Well, first thing I want to do is I'm going to add some smoke that just kind of goes, goes behind it. So I'm going to add a layer, and I'm going to make sure that that layer goes the entire length of the timeline. At the moment, it's a completely blank layer. So the way I'm going to create some smoke is I'm going to go to Filter. I'm going to drop down to Render. And I'm going to create some clouds, which looks absolutely awful. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to zoom out. And with that layer selected, I'm going to press Control T to bring up the pre-transform box. And I'm literally going to stretch it out one way and stretch it out the other. So it gets much more sort of cloud-like or much more sort of fog-like. And then when I'm happy with that, I then press OK. Obviously, we can't see anything on the image. So for the time being, I am going to change the blend mode to overlay. So if I then go back on. So you can see that that's added a sort of cloud-like effect to the image. And if I just use the Move tool to move that along, you can see how that would actually change the image as, as it moves along. So before I actually animate that, I want to decide where I don't want it. So this is going to be like a, a background layer. So I'm going to create a layer mask. And I'm going to paint on it with black everywhere where I don't want it to be. So I don't want it over my model. And getting messages from Facebook. 
That's what happens when you do the things live. And I'm also going to paint out the bank in front. I'm going to paint out the trees. It doesn't have to be super accurate. This is more just for just for show really. Obviously you'd spend more time on this than me. So if I then grab my move tool again, before I do that, make sure that you unlink the layer mask from the main picture. Because otherwise when you move when you animate the move, then you will actually move the layer mask at the same time. And we need the layer mask to actually help with the with the um, illusion. So let's see what that looks like if I just move it. Yeah, I like that. I'm going to need to mask out the tree a bit more so that the, the smoke goes behind. So I will do that now. Back with the brush again, painting black on the layer mask. And I'm literally just painting out the tree. So let's see how that looks when I move that. That works a lot better. So it's a little bit too obvious at the moment. So what I'm going to do with that is I'm going to just drop the opacity down a little bit. Down to say 44%. Okay, that's good. Yeah, I like that. There's a little bit where it gets darker over here. I think I might just change that into, say, a soft light mode. See how that looks. Yeah, soft light is working a little bit better for me. So I'll keep it on onto soft light. Okay, so next up, what I want to do is actually animate that. So I'll go down to the timeline view, which is down the bottom here. And to make anything move in on the timeline, you need to adjust what they call keyframes. Anyone that's in the video world will, will know about this. Um, but basically what keyframes do is it tells Photoshop I want this in this position at this time and I want this in this in this other position at another time. So I've got the image selected. Make sure you've got your image selected, not the actual layer mask because you can actually move the layer mask as well. And then I'm going to select position and you'll see the little stopwatch icon when I click on that. And when you see that little yellow mark, it means that it's added a keyframe. So what I want to do is over the space of that 20 odd seconds, I'm going to drag my timeline all the way to the end. So I've got my start point and now I've got my end point. And what I want with my end point is I want to move the fog all the way over
to the end of the image. And you'll see it's created a keyframe for me at the bottom there. If I go into this little cog icon, icon I can choose to uh, loop the playback. If you're getting any sort of buffering issues or anything like that, you can actually change the resolution of what you view it at. I like it at 50%. It's just a nice balance between the processing of the image and the actual animation. So to have a look at what I've, what I've created, what I'm going to do is I'm going to hit the space bar, and you're going to see that moving. And I like that. So next up, I want to create a little bit of life in the water. So I'm going to create another layer. If you notice that because my my play marker is halfway along, when I created that new layer, it's actually created it at the point where my play marker is. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to just with my mouse, just hover over the left hand side of that drag it all the way left and then drag it from the right hand side all the way to the right so it covers the whole timeline you can have it so that it, it appears and it disappears as well so what i'm going to do now though is i'm just going to add more interest just to the water area so i'm going to add a layer mask again i'm going to unlink it and I'm going to select the image itself. And again, I'm going to create clouds. So down to render. And then we'll go clouds, which again, looks terrible. So I'll go back to overlay so I can see what I'm doing. And I'm going to go back with the layer mask and layer mask just paint with black everything I don't want. So that's everything up here. Also the bank. Okay, I'm now going to select the main image. And I'm going to go control T again, zoom out. And once again, I am just going to change the size of the image just to give me something that allows me to move the move it along the water, deciding on where I want want it to go. I may do a couple of layers of this just so that it kind of interacts a little bit. So once I'm happy, I will then click OK. So I want to animate this as well now. So I'll bring my playback point back to the beginning again. I'll drop down on there, hit the position, which then puts in my keyframe. I'm then going to go all the way to the end again and select my move tool. And I'm not going to drag it too far. I just want it to be subtle. So if I hit play, it just adds a little bit to it. Now what I might do is just play around with the blend modes. As you can see, my, my layer mask needs a little bit of work, so I'm going to go in.
So you know I'm on 100% opacity, 100% flow. So I'm just taking out where I don't want the layer mask to be. which is around the bank area. So I think hard light doesn't work for it. Should try soft light. Let's drop the opacity down. None of this was uh, planned before this little video tutorial. So you are literally watching it as I create. Okay, I like that. So what I wanna do is I'm gonna colorize this so that it, it matches more with, with the water. So what I will do is I will pop in a hue saturation layer and I will alt click in between the lines so that I pin it to the clouds layer and then what I want is I want to colorize it so I've hit the colorize button and I'm just going to change the hue To blue, I'm going to drop the brightness down. Let's see how that looks. Okay, so I need to adjust the layer mask a little bit more just so it's not hitting the trees. Okay, so what I'm going to do now is I'm going to add one more layer just to add a little bit more sort of direction to the water. So I'll go in and I'll add the layer. Again, I will drag it out all the way. Also, again, I will actually use the... Um, use a layer mask to mask off everything, but because I've already created a layer mask for the other one, what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna push and hold Alt or Option on the Mac and drag that layer mask up and it'll automatically apply it to that layer. So once again, I will create clouds. So we'll go filter, Render, clouds, and you can see where that's where that's hitting. Then I'm then going to Control T, and I'm literally just going to flip it out. Like so. And the idea with this one is this one I will drag downwards just to add a little bit of difference to the to the image. So I would say okay on that one. Let's change the blend mode to overlay. And let's animate it. So head back to the beginning. drop down, 
click the position drag it to where I want it to go you can of course add more keyframes during if you want it to follow a track or anything like that so let's do that then so let's go I want to go to there for example and I want the clouds to run to there and then I want them to change Okay, so let's see how that looks. Yeah, so that's adding some some watery effects. Again, with this one, I'm going to add a hue saturation layer. I'm going to clip it to that layer using the Alt or Option key. I am going to colorize it. Go with more of a green color and then we'll make it really dark i'm going to drop the opacity of the layer right down because we only want it to be subtle and let's see how that is hitting the play button and you can see them See them interacting with each other now. Yeah, I, I like that. I like what it's what it's adding. Okay, so let's say I am happy with that. How do we get it out into the world? So first thing we need to do is we need to go File and then Export and then we go to the Save for Web Legacy. And that will take a little while to, to generate. So I'm just letting it follow. You're watching this real time i'm not going to fast forward or anything this will generate the preview so the the preset that you want is for gif or gif depending on what part of the world you're from and how you pronounce it for me it's gif so i'm going to call it gif that's generating its its preview the only real things that you need to worry about are the image size, which is around this area, which is set to your original image size. And then where it says animation, you can choose whether or not it loops once or continuously. I tend to have it just set to continuously. So there's a limited amount of uh, colors that you can have in a, in a GIF. I've got as many selected as I can. So I'm going to choose a looping as forever. And all I'm going to do is hit save. And then we're going to call it Girl by the Water.
and we'll hit save on that one so obviously it comes to loading those images onto a website and you can't upload them directly to Facebook what you need to do is if you go to giphy.com g-i-f-y.com and create an account there you can actually upload your gifts to that and then you can share it to Facebook from there uh, hope you like this little quick tutorial this is almost exported now I will actually save it up onto Facebook and places like that and uh, hit me up at thephotographyjunkie.com follow the podcast and I'd love to hear from you thanks again <laughs>